Let's do. Maybe sorry, but maybe uh, we have a legacy to come in. Make your right. Okay, please wait. Maybe. Please unmute. Uh, okay. Okay. Everyone, please put the chair before the, put the hand before the chest. Hello, Venerable Sir. Hello, Venerable Sir. Hello, Venerable Sir. Hello, Venerable Sir. Nice. Hello, everyone. Bonyat It seems you have there some mask that is making you, uh, what do you call it, mustache. Um, sorry, Venerable Sir, because uh, my last. My last one I changed this, but I am uh, mm, forgot to um, close this. Okay, nice. All right, so let's sit in a comfortable meditation posture. So as you're sitting in a comfortable meditation posture, make sure your back is erect, side cast down. We will be meditating with opened eyes. Make sure you see the place in front of you in the floor, on the floor. And we can make the first determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. From now on, for 10 minutes, I will meditate on muscles and radiate loving kindness without any movement. And with that determination, we can gently lovingly notice the flat piece of flesh at the top of the head. We allow it to be heavy. And we continue to the forehead, eyes, nose, lips, chin. Cheeks, ears, back of the head, we allow all of the muscles and sinews throughout the head to be heavy.
We continue to the neck, shoulders, arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, palms, fingers, tips of fingers, We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the throughout the arms to be heavy. We continue to the chest, abdomen, back. We allow all of the muscles and flesh throughout the upper part of the body to be happy. We continue to the bottom. Eyes, knees, calves, heels, soles, toes. Tips of toes. We allow all of the muscles and flesh, all of the muscles and sinews throughout the body to be heavy. Enjoy the happiness. Now as we allow the body to be the way it is, we achieve freedom from worry about the body. Let's enjoy this freedom. Let's watch this peace. Now let's share our peace with other living beings. 
in our minds voicelessly. We just allow, we permit. May all beings in this room be in peace. May all beings in this building be in peace. May all beings in this city or village be in peace. May all beings in this country be in peace. May all beings on this continent be in peace. May all beings, including me, be in peace. Now, because the time for this sitting is finished, let's make the last determination in our minds voicelessly. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. From now on, I will always be calm. And with that determination, we can slowly, mindfully change the way of our sitting. change the way of our sitting. Let's take one more minute 
during which we will not move, we will, buy, we will be like statues and we will watch curiously what's going on in the mind. Is there any thinking or hearing or seeing or smelling? Is there any bodily contact with the outside world? And whatever we notice, we are curious and watch that. Okay, very well. So, um, I've noticed that Jackson and Wembo Wa had some problems during meditation. You need to keep your camera on, whether you're healthy or not, whether you feel beautiful or not, you need to have it on, you know. Like when you go to school, you also do not take something and say, Oh, please don't look at me, you know, I don't want you to see me. You don't do that, right? So you shouldn't do that during our class as well. So keep your camera on, otherwise we remove you from the meeting. And during meditation I need to see your legs, hands and face so that I can check that your meditation is correct. All right? Because some of you, if you don't have the correct, uh, medit the correct posture, then I need to help you to get the correct posture so that it's healthy and you do not get your legs permanently numb or some other problems like permanent back pain, permanent neck pain and so on. So these things need to be resolved as soon as possible. So that's why you always need to have your camera on. All right? If you don't have it, we just remove it. We just remove you. It's that simple. Okay, so I have noticed that Kai Nguyen probably didn't have correct posture. Kai Nguyen, can you tell me how did you meditate? Can you sit in your meditation posture and show us? How did you meditate? Kai Nguyen? Kai Nguyen, can you sit in your meditation posture? Can you show me how did you meditate? Uh huh. Uh, so that's not correct. So you are placing your calf. What you are doing is uh, you are you are sitting in this way. <clears throat> uh, you are sitting in this way. It's uh, it's a little bit different the way how you're sitting but you are keeping your toes under a calf how exactly are you doing it I'm not exactly sure but uh, I can see that you have your your toes under your calf and that's wrong you should have all of the feet calves knees and thighs on the floor so it should be like this, you see? So we get this foot entirely on the floor 
and then we get this foot entirely on the floor all right and then we get the calves entirely on the floor knees are close to the floor and the thighs are entirely on the floor you think you can sit that way no not yet you still have something under that your your other leg If you can say, you see, I have, I have this and this one in front of each other. Doesn't have to be so accurate. Can be a little bit like this, but you need to have uh, all of the legs entirely on the floor. No, it's wrong. You're still keeping uh, your calf on a foot. Or so it seems. You can also try to open the knees a little more. You see? You can push the knees a little back so that they are further. Okay, okay, that looks good. So, Wemboa, I hope that from the next class I will be able to see your legs, hands and face. Otherwise, unfortunately, you cannot join the class. And I need to see your video also. Do you have some technical problem? You can, you're already unmuted, so you can tell us what's the problem. Wemboa. So it seems like Wemboa is not really here, so I will have to remove her. Uh, remove. Is that a man or a woman? I don't know. All right. So I would like to ask everybody to grade your meditation piece. So please come close to your camera. You can grade 0 to 10. Remember to grade just one time every other time will not be taken seriously. Jackson will also need to turn on his video, otherwise I will remove him as well. Maintain your video nicely on. Franklin as well. Need to have it on. Sorry. So everybody come close to your camera and grade your meditation. You are telling me what was the uh, level of peace you had in meditation so if it is if it was excruciating pain and it was very uncomfortable it is zero if it was like in the heaven and you're flying uh, in the sky then it is 10 if it is something well normal nothing special I quite fine is number five okay so zero is horrible pain and suffering 10 is like in heaven, 5 is totally normal, nothing special, um, and nothing interesting or uninteresting, not really painful, not really pleasurable, not at all. As soon as it, uh, for example, you had a little bit of uncomfort, well then it is 4 or 3. If you felt, oh this was pretty peaceful, it was pretty nice, but nothing special indeed, then it is 6 or 7, okay? doesn't have to be exact no need to write 6.7 or that kind of thing uh, just maintain full numbers whole numbers 8.7 no we don't accept that okay we'll accept only the first number so if you write 8.7 it means 8 for us need to use only whole numbers so I'm still waiting we'll be giving you 20 seconds more So now what are you doing? Whoever has not graded your meditation is now coming to grade their meditation. You are telling us the level of your peace. Zero is painful. 
uh, very painful. Five is pretty nothing special. Ten is very special, like if you were flying in the heaven. If it was a little bit more than normal, nothing special, it's six or seven. If it was a little bit painful, but not much, then it is three or four. And now that's it. So let's continue uh, with... Nine. Sorry? Mine is ten or nine. It can be ten or nine. You will have to choose one and write it, but it really doesn't matter. Ideally, you do not grade 10 because 10 is uh, when you're flying in the sky and nobody here was flying in the sky. So um, you can really have uh, highest only nine and the lowest zero is as if you are boiled in boiling um, in a boiling oil in the hell. Nobody here was in the hell. So you can do lowest one. Okay, so do not use 10. Do not use zero. Use uh, lowest is uh, really one for you and highest is uh, nine for you. If you use ten, no problem. For next time, remember that. Okay, Edward, what it is? Did you feel like you were flying in the sky? No, I actually picked it one, but since you changed it, now it has to be two because, like, it was pretty bad, but just a bit of good. A bit of good, well, then it would be probably three. Yeah, no problem. Just uh, remember next time to be uh, to uh, uh, to count with this new attitude. Totally no problem. Don't think about this. It's not serious. Thank you, Venerable Sir. We are then uh, looking at. Um, your score and we see whether you have pain for many days in a row if one day is something uncomfortable but otherwise it's good we don't really tell you anything but if i see that you again and again have so much of suffering in meditation then i have the plan to contact you separately and help you with the practice if you feel you need help contact me you know uh, send me a message in viber or uh, tell one of the organizers, uh, explain, hey, I have problem with your meditation, then we connect and resolve that. All right. So, um, Vumimi has some problem. Okay. Maintain, yes, maintain always your camera on. It's of utmost importance for us. So now I will be giving you three refuges, five precepts, so everybody can unmute. Keep your hands together at the chest, so everybody can unmute right now. Alright, so you can keep your hands at the chest and we can start. Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajam Pancha Silang Dhammang Yajam Anugya Mangatva Anugya Mangatva Silang Deta Me Bhante Anukampang Upadaya Duti Ampe Aham Bhante Sarana Saha Pancha Silan Hamanya Jami Pancha Silan 
And now I would like to ask you everybody to pay full concentration on taking the three refugees and five precepts, okay? Now you're still requesting me. See if you're concentrated and leave the chat box alone, all right? Don't worry about the chat box. Now you're going to take three refugees, five precepts, and you're first requesting me for that. So let's continue. Dati yanti aham bhante. Dati Okay, I would like to ask Rambo Wa to set up the camera so that I can see your face. You can see I can see everybody's face and just see it as well. So let's continue now. You're going to take three refuges. It's a big thing. Taking three refuges is a very important and very serious thing. So see if you can all pay attention. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa. Buddhang Saranangat, Chami, Dhamang Saranangat, Chami, Dhamang Saranangat, Chami, Dudhyampi <laughs> Saranagamanang Paripunang Very well. So, Jackson, what is the first precept? The first precept is no killing. Panati pata vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Panati pata vera manisikha samadhyami. Okay, Wembo Wa, what is the second precept? No stealing. That's right. Adinna dana vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Okay, then. Bo Mimi, what is the third precept? No sexual misconduct. Kame sumicha chara vera manisikha padang samadhyami. Okay, Sia, what is the fourth precept? No. Try another one. Mm. Do I drink alcohol and no drugs? No. Try another one. Speechless. 
คุณให้ยังไงบูสอง So, Mo, can you help s i a n What is the fourth precept? Not telling lies. So, thank you very much, s i a n What is the fourth precept? Not telling lies. Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. Musa vada vera manesika padang samadhyami. Okay, then. k a i n g u y e n can you tell us what is the fifth precept? You are already unmuted. Sorry, what do you say, k a i n g u y e n And g o r i n and go home. And then it has two parts, right? Can you tell us both parts, k a i n g u y e n In t a k g o r o f s That's right. Not taking alcohol, not drinking alcohol, not taking drugs. You can keep yourself unmuted, please. k a i n g u y e n you can unmute yourself. <laughs> k a i n g u y e n you can keep yourself unmuted. Yes. Yes. Thank you. No, 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 no. I have heard you. I have heard you. Just keep yourself unmuted. k a i n g u y e n you are going to take the precept, so please keep yourself unmuted. k a i n g u y e n can you please unmute yourself? Can you please unmute yourself and repeat after me? บาณาติปาตาเวรมณีสิกขาปดังสมาดิยามิบาณาติปาตาเวรมณีสิกขาปดังสมาดิยามิบาณาติปาตาเวรมณีสิกขาปดังสมาดิยามิ So let's do the fifth precept. I was a little confused. So Sura me raya macha pamada thana ve ra manisikha padang samadhyami. Okay. So I will now wish you all that you protect. And follow these three refuges and five precepts very well, and maintain your mindfulness. So mindfulness is being aware of your mind. So if you're angry, you need to be aware of it, and you do not speak based on your anger. Instead, you apply wisdom and see, aha, anger harms me and others. So I don't want to be harmed, and if I don't want to be harmed, I also should not harm others. So whenever there is anger, we keep it in the mind, and we don't use it outside as speech or action. All right. If you are able to keep it in the mind, and if you use wisdom, it may disappear. Sometimes it doesn't disappear. That will depend on the power of your wisdom. But sometimes you need to learn a lot to have that sufficient wisdom. And that's why you are here. So. I hope to teach you that wisdom, so that whenever you are angry, you can keep it in the mind and have it dissolve, so that it entirely disappears, and you can love and cherish and appreciate any living being and every living being in the world, including yourself. All right. So we maintain our mindfulness so that we protect ourselves from anger and greed. So that's what I will be wishing you. And then you can reply, "Ah, m a b h a n t e yes, v e r y o s e r So let's try that together. You can keep your hands together at the chest. t h i s a r a n e n a s a d h i n g pancha silang tamang s a d u k a n g surakitang katwa apamadena sampade tham." All right, so let's continue in our story. So I would like to ask you to raise your hand if you uh, remember what we were talking about uh, last week without looking in the book. Whoever remembers what we talked about the last week, 
Whoever remembers what we talked about the last week without looking at the book, please raise your hand. Be sure that you remember, because I will ask you, and if you don't remember, it will be so embarrassing. Okay, so May, what did we talk about the last week? You're muted. You're muted. Can you unmute yourself? The, the God to chose five different things before he died. That was what we repeated from the lesson before the previous lesson. But what was the new thing that I explained to you last week? Would you remember, May? No. Mm. Okay, so Alex, what was it? Um, Venerable Sir, last time we talked about Yojanas, and if I'm correct, they are the distance of an ox cart wagon. I think like usually 10 miles. Uh, you did not finish really the, uh, the expression. So Yojana is a distance. So let's uh, ask Robert. Robert, what is Yojana? Yojana is the distance of an ox cart, which the distance you can travel in one day. The um, what we were talking about with Yojanas was the um, some it was a garden. I think it started with the. I cannot hear the, you. Can you please come closer to the to the microphone? The um sacred garden in heaven that you said was 60 yojanas where the buddha went before he died with um someone else whose name i can't remember as well that's true thank you very much uh cherry uh, can you tell me what was the name of the garden out of your memory without looking in your book um the name of the uh. Wait. Are you sure you're not looking into your book? I think, uh, I don't think. You don't remember? Favorite. So can you tell me uh, what is the main, uh, why do gods, other gods as well, go to the garden, uh, go, go uh, to this garden of joy? Mm -hmm. So they go to the garden to forget about the death and um, so they can enjoy peace and mindfulness again. Okay. It seems Robert remembers the name of the garden. Yeah. It was Nandavana Garden. That's right. Thank you very much, Nandavana. So today we will be looking... <laughs> today uh, we will be looking at Uh, we will be looking uh, at uh, how the mom of the Buddha to be was getting ready for the Buddha to be to uh, to appear in her womb. Does everybody here know what's a womb? Whoever knows what's a womb, please raise your hand. Whoever knows what's a womb, W O M B. Please raise your hand. That's not many people. <laughs> Whom was your home a few years ago? So what could it be? <laughs> Anyone else? So we have only... Uh, how many? Only a few of you would know what's a womb. Even if you're not sure, raise your hand. doesn't matter. You don't have to be 100% sure. You're not sure, just raise your hand. I will not be asking you this time. I just want to know how many of you know what's a womb. Okay, not really many. All right, well, you're not so many, so I will ask. <laughs> so I would like to ask, well, I spoke already with Robert, so let's speak with Nathan. Nathan, what's a womb? I think it is um, in our mom's belly when we were just a tiny little 
baby. Yes, that's right. So womb is the place where all of us first appear before we are uh, before we are born. Well done, Nathan. Thank you very much. So um, the Buddha to be in order that he can uh, be born as a human, he will first have to enter a womb. He will first have to appear in a belly of a mother. And that's what we will be talking about today. So, hopefully everybody can see my text. So, at the precise moment of Bodhisattva Deva, of the Buddha to be the God, Seta Ketu's demise, Siri Mahamaya. So, who is that? That was the chief queen of King Suddhodana, of the kingdom of Kapilavattu. So, here you get the name of the lady, her position. Uh, whose wife she was. She was the queen of the king. That was the, his name was Suddhodana. And where was that? That was in the kingdom of Kapilavattu. Kapilavattu was a huge city. It was a huge city in a large country. And King Suddhodana was in charge of that whole city. He was the king of that city. Um, there is a better word for that, but we use the word king in this case. Because probably the city was autonomous. It means it was free. There was full freedom to do anything the king wants and to do in that city. Okay, so that queen was enjoying magnificent regal pleasures. What are regal? Regal means royal. It means in the palace. So the queen was enjoying many pleasures in the king's palace. Then she had now reached the third portion of uh, the second stage of life called Majjhimavaya. So um, this is a little complicated thing, but you may like to know that in Buddhism we understand that humans usually live about 100 years. And 100 years is further divided into three portions. The first about 30 years, the second about 30 years, and then the remaining portion. So the second portion is about 30 to about 60 years. And the queen was about 55 years old. She was exactly 55 year years old and four months. Okay. So now uh, there was a festival. It was the ninth waxing day of Asalha. Well, this is a special kind of uh, uh, calendar uh, that we will not talk about. But the chief queen was 55 years and four months old. The people of the kingdom were joyously celebrating a festival. It was a festival of the way how the stars look in the heaven. So the stars looked in the sky in some nice way. And so the people were celebrating that as they would every year. And one and all participated hilariously. Here hilariously means very happily, not um, uh, the new meaning, the modern meaning, in the festivity, outdoing one another in merrymaking. So they were competing in being happy, in dancing and singing and playing musical instruments and so on. And so the queen she also joined uh, this uh, festival and um, the festival was very special by the fact that nobody drank alcohol during this festival. 
Nobody drank alcohol during this festival. It's a very special thing. Usually today people drink alcohol when they're having fun, but in the Buddha's time during a festival, people did not drink alcohol. And uh, there was also no beautification with flowers, perfumes and ornaments. So you would just come there and enjoy the time with others, but you did not really drink alcohol, you did not apply any perfumes, you did not put any flowers into your hair to be more beautiful. On the full moon day of the month, the chief queen woke up early, took a perfumed bath, made a most generous donation. Um, she donated probably to ascetics, uh, to those who lived in the forest and meditated already before the Buddha appeared in the world. She then dressed up herself. She had a breakfast of amazing, um, amazing, delicious food. And then she took eight precepts. We will be talking about eight precepts, eight precepts after about a year or two. So it's a little bit stricter uh, following rules. So you are taking five precepts every week with me, but uh, eight precepts are a little stricter. With eight precepts, you're not allowed to sing or dance or listen to music. You're not allowed uh, to play musical instruments, uh, to use a lipstick or um, uh, in another way, you know, paint your, uh, paint your face. Uh, you're not allowed to use perfumes and so on. And so then, uh, so the queen, she was following eight precepts and she continued uh, to a beautiful royal chamber and she spent her day on a couch that was very beautiful. And then she had a dream. So it's usually the dream that you will be and that you will hear about and read about. Um, as you can see we're going through many many uh, uh, many details for which uh, you will not really find out in any other book. It's the special thing of this book that it provides us with these amazing details. So observing the eight precepts, such as not, uh, dancing and singing and using perfumes and lying on the couch, uh, the queen fell into a short slumber and had a dream. Okay, And what was that dream about? This dream predicted, this dream spoke about the future. This dream showed to the queen what will happen in the future, namely that a Buddha to be will be born, uh, will be born to her. So, what happened? The four Chatumaharaja Devas. So these are the kings of four lower heavens. Okay, Chatu means four, Maha means great. Raja means king and Deva is a god. So these are uh, god kings or king gods of, uh, of the four. These are four great, how to say that? Uh, these are the king, the great gods, the great kings of gods of the four realms, of the four lower uh, realms of heaven. So these four gods, these four kings of gods, they lifted and carried the queen together with her bed to a very special lake in Himalayas. All right, so how could that happen? How do you imagine that? Well, we first have to know where are Himalayas. So let's look at where are Himalayas. So Himalayas, are in the north of India. Okay, so you get India. It's a huge, huge country. It's about as big as the USA and it's much bigger than Myanmar, incomparably bigger than Vietnam. And in the north of uh, India, you will see there are the mountains of Himalayas. They're huge. 
they're huge. They could be, I'd say they're as big as maybe two Vietnams. Maybe about two Vietnams, okay? Very big, huge, huge. So um, the queen in her dream, she was in the Himalayas and these kings of gods, they took her bed together with her and they were carrying it to that lake and there is a lake it's called Anotatta and then she was placed on the flat surface of the orpiment slab measuring 60 yojanas okay this is maybe not so important it's unnecessary detail the point is that she was placed close to the lake Anotatta all right and she was placed there on a nice flat surface is it really Himalayas? I worry that actually Lake Anotata is not in Himalayas, but it's in Uttarakuru. So um, this is actually not uh, accurate information. So we will have to cross it out because I disagree. Let me see to do that. So what is Uttarakuru? Uttarakuru is a special world of humans where people live until the age of 1000 years. All right. You believe it or not, doesn't matter to me. I'm telling you what's in the scriptures. So there is this lake, um, Anotata, in that very special world where people, where there are really humans, they're not gods, not at all. They're humans and they live 1000 years. So she was uh, carried to that lake and she was um, placed there close to that lake under, um, under the shade of a sala tree, okay, of a huge, of a huge tree. Thereafter, Consorts of the four Chatumaharaja Devas came on the scene, took the queen to the lake Anotatta and bathed her and helped her get clean. Okay, so who are consorts? Consorts are wives. In the Buddha's time, usually kings would have not just one wife or two wives or five wives or ten wives. They would have a hundred wives. And it is believed what? that in heavens... The gods have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of wives. What? Yeah, believe it or not. So, um, these uh, wives of the four great kings of gods, they came to that place, to the uh, lake, and they took the queen, uh, the queen uh, into that lake and they cleaned her. Be careful, this is still the dream. Now they dressed her in, uh, in celestial costumes, which mean in clothes of the heaven. So these are clothes that are worn in heaven by gods, and they applied celestial cosmetics to her. So uh, some perfumes and makeup and so on. And they also adorned her with flowers from heaven. So these are special flowers which grow only in heaven. And then she was put to sleep with her head towards the east, in the inner chamber of a golden mansion inside a silver mountain not far away from the lake so this is quite a mouthful so you get a silver mountain close to the lake inside that silver mountain there is a hollow there is a place there is space okay and so these consorts and the kings of gods they took this queen who was bathed and perfumed and cleaned and so on she was taken into this chamber, into this hollow inside of that mountain. All right. And that hollow, that room was actually golden. Now, at that, so you can imagine golden walls, probably. At that moment in her dream, she saw a pure white elephant grazing around the golden mountain not the silver one the golden mountain which was not far from the silver mountain where she was okay so you have the lake anotatta 
Close by there is one mountain, it's silver. Close by there is one mountain, it's gold. It's golden, all right? And on that mountain, somewhere there is a golden, uh, what is there? Uh, around. Around that mountain, so down on the ground, not on the mountain. Down on the ground, around that mountain, there was a huge white elephant that is eating the grass or just walking. It's hard. This, this word is complicated. Uh, so there is a white elephant that is walking on the grass around that golden mountain. Then what did he do? Then the white elephant descended from the golden mountain. So now we have a problem. So was it around or was it on the mountain? We don't know. Anyway, maybe there, uh, the elephant was sometimes on the mountain and sometimes around the mountain. And so the white elephant went down from that mountain and he came into that silver mountain, into the room where the queen was. And then this white elephant walked around the queen clockwise, that means clockwise, like the clock, you know, you know how the clock is working. So um, that's uh, the direction in which he was walking. And then he somehow entered in her, into her womb, into her belly, from the right side by breaking it open. If you cannot imagine, you're not alone. But that's what, she, what was her dream, okay? It was a dream and in dreams, you know, anything is possible. So somehow this huge elephant made a hole into her belly and this huge elephant entered into her belly. I suppose the elephant had to become a little smaller so that it could go through the opening. How did it get small? How did an elephant get small? Because it's a dream. And in dream, anything's possible. Oh, like imagination or sure. a nightmare. Sure, sure. That's how the queen felt it, you know, that's uh, that was the feeling of the queen. So at the time when the queen was thus dreaming, the god Buddha to be, Seta Ketu, was going around the Nandavana garden into Sita, enjoying uh, pleasurable things to see and things to hear, and then he died there with full comprehension and awareness. So he died mindfully, aware of what's going on in his mind. At that very instant, at that very moment, the Buddha-to-be uh, appeared in the womb of the mother. Okay, we are not going to go through these very complicated explanations because they uh, are difficult even for the teenagers, uh, but we will be moving from here. So the event took place on the morning of Thursday and we have the exact date when that happened according to the Burmese understanding. So the Sri, Lanka, Sri Lankan monks will tell you probably a different date. Uh, Thais will surely also tell you a different date. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the idea is that there was a specific time when the Buddha to be was uh, appeared in the womb. And uh, the precise moment of his conception was marked by the conjunction of the moon with the constellation, constellation Uttara Salha. So the point is here that the festivities based on something that people saw in the sky were right. They were festivities that were expecting the Buddha's birth. Just the people didn't know that they are not celebrating the way how stars look in the sky, but they are celebrating the time when the Buddha is going to be born. All right, and that's it. Whoever wants to go to sleep, you can, but make sure that you will write down the notes. We'll be writing a little short note about this. Uh, it's definitely better um, it's definitely better for you to uh, to write the notes here so you do not need to worry whether you wrote the notes or not and where are they and are they complete and should you really write it and how should you write them and do you have some question and so on. 
So it's better to write them right here. So you can take your notebook and write your date. It will be September 30, 2023 for Myanmar and Vietnam. And it will be September 29, 2023 for USA and Jamaica. So the heading will be the conception of the Buddha to be. Jackson says he wants to leave you. Whoever, can, whoever wants can leave. I have already said it. And uh, now uh, you have there the first note. The Queen Maha Maya or Maya joined the festivities held because of an auspicious or lucky formation of stars in the sky. Nobody drank alcohol there, used perfumes or uh, flowers to make themselves beautiful.
Okay. Okay, so that's all. It's not little, but I think it's not too much. As soon as you finish, you can raise your hand. Mimi, have you finished writing the note? Yes. Okay, yes, you can leave. Thank you for coming today. Goodbye, Venable, sir. Right. So whoever has finished writing the note, you can raise your hand. Rari, you have finished writing the note? Yes. Okay, if you want to go, you can. I will be just waiting for the others to encourage them to write, so if you want to go, you can. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. Thank you for living in the world.
Okay. Baola, have you finished writing your note? Yes, my notable sir. Nice. Thank you for coming today. May you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be successful in everything you do. Saru, Saru, Saru. Goodbye, venerable sir. So let's give one more minute. Um, venerable fur. Yes. Um, I'm not really done, but I did the small sentences. Can I leave now? Yeah. Are you sure you will continue later tomorrow or play, uh, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow? Okay. okay. So you can go. Good night. Thank you and bye bye. So um, hopefully you all can continue until you finish writing. Uh, I'm going to do something else. And uh, I hope to see you everybody next week. So we can greet each other. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be successful in everything you do. Thank you very much, Bhante. Anyone, can you please unmute? And put your hand at your chest. Please say goodbye. Goodbye, little man. Thank you. I would like to ask you.